Hey guys, Dan here from Your Guitar Academy and welcome back to Unit 2 and Lesson 6. And hopefully you've been really enjoying the strumming and the two chords that we've been putting together. And very importantly, I want you to be continuing to do that. You'll notice that I now have a beautiful electric guitar. And first thing I'm going to say is that if you've got an acoustic guitar, it doesn't matter, you know, you can do exactly the same thing with the acoustic guitar. I just wanted to pick up an electric guitar for the guys that are sitting there with an electric thinking, oh, I feel a bit, uh, you know, you've got an acoustic guitar, can I do all this with an acoustic or with an electric? You can do it with both, it doesn't matter. So for this unit, I'm going to use the electric guitar just for a bit of variation. Also, typically lead stuff is a little bit easier on the electric guitar, of course, you know, slightly thinner strings perhaps, um, maybe a slightly uh, less thick neck or various things. Um, but please know it can be done on both. So I'm just doing it on the electric guitar for now. So what we're going to be doing in this lesson is we're going to be starting to delve into a guitar gym style exercise, something that's going to get your fingers working and start to talk more and more about your right hand as well. So pick up that guitar and let's get started. <laughs> to this course and you've just come through to this on YouTube, then please remember that you can head on over to the website and you'll find full write-ups for every lesson, all of the tab, all of the chord boxes, the fretboards, everything you need to absolutely smash and master every single lesson. As well as that, please do like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It massively helps us continue to provide you these free courses and leave us a comment. If you've got questions, we will get back to you. So leave us a comment under the video and we'll speak to you there. Okay then guys, so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna play this exercise for you with the drum beat and then we'll talk about how you guys can do it. So, here's the drums. Um, let's put it on a nice steady 50 BPM for the moment. Same beat that we've been working with up to this point. And the exercise sounds like this. Two, three, four. So there's our exercise, and we're gonna call it a five, six, seven, eight exercise. It's not a step song. It is in fact a guitar gym exercise. Uh, any of those people who know the step song, congratulations, great song. Uh, classic 90s stuff. Um, so this exercise is all about finger dexterity and matching up your right and left hand, okay? So up to now, we've been very much focusing on kind of chords with the left hand, which means, you know, putting the fingers in, digging them in, and then keeping them in one place for as long as we need, and then moving a little bit to get to another chord. But there's not been much movement with the left hand. And with the right hand, we've been focusing on that big movement of the strum. Now we're gonna get really intricate. We're gonna do little movements with both hands, okay? So let's, let's talk about the left hand first, okay? And what I'm basically doing is coming up here to the fifth fret. Now, let's just recap a little bit. Hopefully you guys now know that the fifth fret is an A, because I do a, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and A. So if you've been working on that, then you'll, you'll know that and it's suddenly it's gonna become a bit more useful, okay? And basically what I'm gonna try and do is play a semitone up, so A, A sharp, B, and C, using one finger per fret, okay? And that's the important part of this, is one finger per fret. It's not this, same effect audibly, but in terms of physically, we want to start using one finger per fret. So we get used to working with each individual finger. Okay. So to make this possible, we need to have that hand position that we talked about before. The thumb needs to be right at the back of the neck, nice and flat, and that allows me to bring that wrist all the way round, like so. And once that's round, I should be able to separate, at this point, the first finger, second finger, third, and fourth finger onto each fret, okay? 
And just as with the chords, I'm always going to try and uh, fret the note. So put the no my fingers as close to the silver fret as possible. So you can see I get the cleanest sound by doing that. Okay. I'm also trying to be on my fingertips as much as possible. And notice that if you look at how it's stretched out there, my thumb is roughly in the position of my second finger on the back of the neck. It's not way back here. It's not over here. It's something around there for the easiest hand position. Now, just take a break there. It will feel awkward, just as when we first start doing chords. This is now a big stretch for those fingers. Okay, so it might be that the first and second finger find that okay, but the little finger is just, it just cannot be tamed. And that's what the exercise is here to do, tame all the fingers and get you in control of them. So once you've got the hand position, you're gonna then take the second, third, and fourth finger off, and then start with the first one. So that fifth fret, okay, the A note. Then you're gonna keep that one down and put the next one on and pluck it. Then you're gonna keep that one down and put the third finger on and pluck it. And then you're gonna put the little finger down and pluck it. Importantly here, as I put each finger down, the previous ones stay on. That's super important. So rather than this, this is what a lot of people would end up doing. You know, as one finger goes down, the other kind of seesaws away from the fretboard. That's no good. We want it to look like this. So little movements, controlled movements. So you're kind of making sure that there's not much actually happening to look at. It looks like a spider. That's why these are called spider exercises. It creeps along rather than this. You know, that's awful. <laughs> and in terms of just simply getting up speed, you're doing so much extra work there. As those fingers launch away from the fretboard, you're never going to get that kind of speed up with that, or accuracy for that matter. So that's your kind of first task. Just sit with that first low E string from the fifth fret, so the A note, to A sharp, to B, and to C trying to get that hand position, okay? From there, with the right hand, we want to start thinking about something called alternate picking, okay? And that simply means, if we just look at that right hand, that I'm, rather than just doing down, 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 just like with the strumming pattern, where we talked about one and two and three and four and, I'm gonna be doing that, but now with smaller movements. So one and two and, okay? So it's that down, up, down, up, just, just only on one string this time, and it matches up to the, so first finger is a down stroke, then an up stroke, then a down stroke, and then an up stroke, okay? And one thing that's a really good tip at this point is where, where to kind of put that wrist. So at the beginning stages, you, you, it's gonna feel really awkward. You might feel like you're kind of hovering in midair, which is okay. You know, you can have the kind of, the actual arm resting on the back of the, the body there. But what I like to do is kind of ground myself somewhere. So some of you guys might like to just literally kind of ground yourself with your, your finger, so your little finger, for example, just literally holding the body where the scratch plate might be on the guitar. There's not one on this guitar, uh, but where it might be. And that just kind of holds you in place so that you don't feel like you're totally in midair when you're picking like that. Or you can kind of just slightly rest uh, the palm, this part of the, of the palm, all, all there, kind of that big fleshy part and down into the middle there. You can rest that on the bridge back here. And that will also allow you to kind of feel like you're a bit more grounded as you move down, okay? Now, don't worry too much about that right hand at this point. That's something that we're gonna be developing uh, as we go forward, as we do a little bit more lead stuff. Um, but as long as you're not, if you do hold it on the bridge like that, make sure not to bring it too far forward because what's gonna happen is you're gonna get this kind of palm mutey sound. Now, as soon as you get that, you know, you're way too far forward. You're actually leaning on the strings at that point. So you wanna bring it back to the bridge. So that's this big old silver bit here. Uh, it looks a little different on all guitars, but that's the basic idea, that's the bridge and that will kind of ground you in place, like so. So you've got a couple of options there. You can do it in midair if you, if you like that, if that feels okay to you. You can do it on the bridge, like that. Or you can do it where you're actually holding your little finger or your third finger, probably little finger really, in place as you go through the strings, like so, okay? For me, that's what I used to do. 
and now I've developed it so that I do more on the bridge. Both work really nicely. You'll see lots of different players doing it in different ways. Um, so it's just about picking one and kind of sticking with it and it will start to feel comfortable, okay? So you're gonna see me do it very much from the bridge like that, okay? Um, so once you've got this, these kind of two elements working, so we've got the down up from the right hand, we've got the one, two, three, four, or the five, six, seven, eight, I should say, with the left hand. We're then just gonna do that, repeat that on each string, okay? So we're gonna go one and two and three and four and, okay? So that's exactly the same on the next string, then exactly the same on the next string. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay, so it's exactly the same on all of the strings. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get that drum beat up. I'm gonna drop it down to, let's say, um, 45 BPM. Okay, so nice and steady, because we're doing eighth notes here. And I'm gonna do that exercise, and this is kind of, I wouldn't recommend jumping straight in with the drum beat. This might be something you aim for over the next few days, but this is what it would sound like. One and two. So it's quite quick. If, if you find after a couple of days that it's just, that's just too quick, I cannot get it anywhere near that speed, then there's a simple fix, okay? So let's take it back up to 55 BPM, okay? And instead of doing eighth notes, one and two and, you can do quarter notes, so one, two, three, four. Okay, so against that drum beat, okay, so if I do this, two, three, four. One, two, so count the, just the main one, two, three, four. Don't worry about the one and two and just that main, those main ones. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, and so on. One, two, three, four. I'd still be practicing my alternate picking. So let's complete the exercise, but just remember that the first step is just simply getting that hand stretched out. Then we're talking about aligning that with the right hand down up picking and just practicing that on each string without a drum beat. Making sure the fingers don't move very far from the fretboard and that they stick to the board as the next ones go down. Okay, you can see how that stays there, that stays there, that stays there, that stays there, okay? and you just roll through all strings like that. Only bring in that drum beat as you're getting comfortable with it. So you just give yourself a kind of measurement. The drum beat's there to help you obviously stay in time, but equally give you some kind of goal. So you know if you're working with a 45 BPM, an eighth note, so one and two and three and four and, then over the next week or two, let's try and get it up to 50 BPM, at eighth notes, that kind of thing. Now we need to do it in reverse then. So we've got to the top. And then we're gonna go back down. So this time we're gonna go from the little finger downwards like this. All right. Now, this might feel a bit more fiddly and of course, this way around, the fingers come off gradually rather than going on, okay? And the first finger is your grounding. That's what you're gonna keep there to keep that hand position in place, all right? So you go from the little finger and then you've gotta really work on your finger independence here. So only the little finger comes up then you play the third finger, then the third finger comes up, second finger, then the second finger comes up, and you hit the first finger. And again, you do down, up, picking with your right hand. So down, up, down, up. Then when you come down to the B string, keep that first finger where it is so you get that stretch, so you don't go like that, you know? You keep that hand position, and then you go into the B string, same thing. So. Notice how my fingers have kind of fallen into place a little bit here. So, see how they've all just kind of fallen in line as I hit that little finger. 
and I just take them off. Take them off. Take them off. Take them off. So you're basically just working with this hand position. You pick up the guitar, the hand position goes on. La 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 la, hand position's on. La 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 la, hand position's on. Okay? So you've got two elements. You've got the going down, and then you've got the coming back, okay? And you'll probably find one of them harder than the other. That's totally normal. So make sure you can do both before you start doing it with a drum beat, and then bring in the drum beat. Okay then guys, so your aim, your first aim with this, of course you're still practicing your E minus to C major seven with your strumming pattern. You're doing your little bits of theory, which we've looked at, and now we're gonna add this aim to it. And I want you to try this exercise without a drum beat, but over the course of the day before tomorrow's lesson, I want you to just give it a go with the slowest drum beat. So maybe 45 BPM, 40 BPM, okay? Again, you can find the beats on our website. We just go 40, 45, 50, they're all kind of there for you in the audio files. So try with the slowest one and just see if you can keep up. It might be at fourth notes, so one, two, three, four or it might be eighth notes, one and two and three and four. I'd say if you're a total beginner, if you've never ever touched the guitar before this course, then go with that fourth note idea. One, two, three, four. If, you're, if you've already played a little bit and your fingers have a bit of dexterity overall, then try and aim for that 45 BPM eighth notes, okay? And that is your first piece of practice with your guitar gym skills. Okay guys, so thank you so much for watching this video. That's it for today. Please do head on over to the next lesson when you're ready, which you can find here, or you can start from the beginning of the playlist right here on YouTube over here. Also, if you want to leave us a comment, we do our best to answer any questions that you might have and pop us a like and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel. Every little helps. Thank you so much guys. Speak to you later.